Working with Excel can be fun and exciting, but without proper security, things can go downhill quite fast. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for freelancers, and your security problems are over. Today, I introduce you to the user security and rights Excel add-in that's gonna allow you to assign multiple security types to any worksheet on any workbook for any user in just a few clicks. It's gonna be an incredible training. I'm gonna share every step with you. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic training, the User Security and Rights Add-in. This add-in is gonna work with any workbook you want. We're gonna be able to assign user rights to any workbook, any worksheet, and of course, we are going to have three different levels of security that you can assign to any worksheet just like that. So it's a whole lot. Not only that, this particular added, we're gonna be able to manage different users. So we can select, add and update and remove users as we wish. And also we're gonna have a log in and out feature that works with every workbook. Now this add-in, we can apply to anything. It's gonna be a great training. If you do like these trainings, I just ask a few small things. Go ahead and subscribe, share the video with all of your friends and family. I'm sure they will appreciate it. Also click on the like and the notification icon because that'll ensure that you get these trainings. I respond to each and every comment every single morning with my morning coffee. It is you and my coffee that is the best morning because I respond to every comment. If you look down in the comments, you'll see every single one, unless it's within a few hours old, has a reply by me personally. That is what I do every day. So I do want to hear from you. I want to know your ideas, your feedback, your questions, your comments, or the issues that you face, or the videos that you might want to see, whether it is comprehensive application development, like I do every single Tuesday, or perhaps it's VBA Basic for Beginners that I do every single weekend, because this channel is for you. My goal is not just to make you good with Excel, but to make you successful with it. So I don't want to just teach you the fundamentals. I want to show you how to create success from using Excel and that's what we're here to do every single week. If you do also like these trainings, you want to support the channel, some fantastic ways to do that. The first of which is the extremely popular 350 workbook pack. So I took every single massive template that I put together the last seven years and I put it into one incredible zip file along with a library so you can quickly locate any template you want and open up the video or open up the workbook or even the PDF codebook. Each particular workbook has a PDF codebook. That's the 350 workbook pack. I put the link down below. That's a great way to support the channel, along with our Patreon. Now, Patreon members is well over 350 members now, and each and every week I create an additional updated training along with an updated workbook. And that's gonna be based on your suggestions, your ideas, your feedback. We call that the feature fix or focus, where I add additional features or I create fixes in case there's any issues, or perhaps I focus on something that we didn't cover in the original training or something more in depth. That's all happening on Patreon, so make sure you join us. All right, so let's get started on this training. This training, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about this add-in. It's called User Security and Rights. It is an add-in, which means it works with every single workbook you open. And we have three features of this. We have the workbook security. What we can do is we can select from the open workbooks. We see we have two different workbooks open, but if I open an additional one, it's also going to be active. So let's go ahead and pull up an additional one. I've got this uh, older tree view here, and I've got a user security add-in here. This is an old, I've got a user rights. Now, if you remember this correctly, let's take a quick look at this. For those of you who've been with me from the beginning, seven years ago, I created this user login and security. However, there have been some fundamental issues with this type of application. There's been three ones that I wanted to focus on, and that's a reason that I'm redoing this training and I'm putting it in an ad. So the first issue is one, this applies to a single workbook. So this workbook, basically the user would select 
on an individual item and double click on it and then they could change the right. So it was kind of cool, but it only applied to this exact workbook and nothing else. So that was a problem. Another issue was inside the code. Now let's take a look at inside the code of this workbook. There was some issues inside that. So which was this form right here. If we take a look at some of these fonts here. So you see this strange D. Well, it turns out that this character doesn't work with every single language pack. So in essence, what I would should have done is done something like character and then whatever the character is 254 or something like that or whatever it is, I would put the character inside there. So that's the proper way to do that. So that was a fundamental error. And another issue was this particular sheets were based on a formula and it didn't always work, especially when you were adding and removing sheets. So I would never have done this again. I would use VBA to populate this or update this or something like that. So I wouldn't do that again. So I used that, but that was seven years ago and I've learned a lot. So now I've taken this training and I've put it into an add-in. So now we have all the features that we do. We're going to use this tree view control. So we have all of the users. So each individual user here, and then each individual user can have different rights on a per sheet basis. So for example, if we take a look at Fred here, we select on the dashboard. He has the dashboard, which is locked, but it's visible. The chart data here is completely unlocked while the admin here is locked and hidden. So Fred Fetters, unfortunately, he does not have the intelligence to be able to look at the admin screen. So we're going to hide that completely from him. We don't want him looking at that. So there's three different security levels that you could assign to any user. So if I want to select John James and maybe there's a worksheet that I want. So let's say I want to give him full capacity for orders. So I would just select it and click unlock and then save and update that. And now we see that John James, if we see here, he's got that green icon there and we see that he has the ability now to look at that. And of course we can change that if we want to make it locked and visible, we can update that. And we see that John James now has orders with the yellow and the red icon locked means that is hidden and locked while the yellow is locked and visible and the green means unlocked. So we have three different icons that represent those similar to the original training. This is all in an add-in and it's going to work with every open workbook. So let's show that to you now. I was going to show it to you before, but I wanted to give you the fundamentals of where this original training come from. So if I take a look inside this tree view, this older tree view training that we did, which is one of the things. And so now what we can do is we can apply that to that. So I'm going to have that open up and we see that it'll open up the add -ins. So Let's pull that up. Here's the security and rights. So maybe I wanted to apply it. So I actually have already added this to the workbook. So we see that we've got the tree view and we've already got some data on this, which is very, very helpful. But what I want to do is I want to pull up a brand new workbook and I want to show you how we can use this even in a new workbook. So I'm going to open up a new workbook now and then it's called book two. So I'm going to save this and then we'll go ahead and do a save as and then we'll do an XLSM file and then we'll just do it on the desktop here. So we'll do test. So once it's saved, we're now going to look in the workbook security and rights here and we see that we have three workbooks here and the test is one of them. And we've uh, all the users that we have. We can also select here. So either you can select a user here in the user list, or we can select a user here. We can select the worksheet. Now sheet one, we only have one worksheet available and then we can assign the security. So it's kind of simple and we can do that. And once we do that, we assign it. So Debbie now has sheet one that's visible. We can change that relatively easy. So basically whatever workbooks that we have open are going to be available inside this drop down list. Now, when it comes to users, what users are available? Well, if we take a look at it, we have a user management and the user management is here and we can select on any user. We can sign a password. We can add a brand new user so we can do this test. We can give it a password from two, three, and we can give it an email if we want, and we can save and update the user. And so what that's going to do is going to automatically save an update. And so we see now we have test here that we just created. So creating new users is very simple. We can also delete the new users. Once a user gets created, we can distribute that workbook and then the user can go ahead and log in or log out. So we can test here and we do a one, two, three here, and then we can log in with that too. And it gives the user the ability to log in. Once they log in, it will automatically be available for them to actually show and hide the worksheets accordingly or assign the user rights. Great. So we have login and out, we have user management and we have worksheet security and management, all of that into a single added. Of course, I'm going to walk you through every step. If you just want to simply use this 
add-in. Of course, I'm going to go over steps on how you can use it, install it, and download it. If you do want to download this add-in, the add-in is absolutely free. All you need to do is, if you're on my website, you'll look for a download button. If you're inside YouTube, you'll just look for the word download in the description and click the link and put your name and email, and I'll make sure to get this sent over to you absolutely free. Once you do download it, make sure that you right-click on the file. If you're new, using the newer version of Windows, you want to be able to right-click and then click the unblock button. So you'll see an unblock. Once you have enabled the macros and you want to install it, you'll just go to the developer. Now, if you don't have the developer tab open, you can right-click any of the tabs and click customize the ribbon. Make sure the developer is selected here. Once it is visible, you're going to go inside here to Excel add-ins. And then what you want to do is you want to browse for the add-in that you just downloaded and you unblocked it. So the screen will come up like this. You'll browse for it and it'll look for the add-in. So it'll be inside your downloads folder and it will be an add-in. So it looks something like this or whatever it is. Speaking of the Excel AI tool pack, you might want to check that out. So you'll simply just click on it and click OK. And what that's going to do is going to add it in and built it. And it'll probably be selected. If you have installed it before already, you would just find it in this list and select it. If you want to uninstall it, you simply unselect it. So you see here, mine user security and add in if i want to uninstall it i'll just unselect it and click ok and it's going to be uninstalled if i want to install it again after i've had it i just go down here and i select it once it is installed of course you're going to want to then manage your users it'll come with some fake data but you can of course delete any of the users here that you want and of course you can add your own i do suggest leaving at least one admin if you can and also you'll be able to disperse this workbook to anybody else and once they log in they'll have the assumed rights so it's very very helpful so let's get into a little bit about this add-in so once it's installed you'll have this custom toolbar with these three options the login log out where they simply enter their username if they try to enter something without any data we're going to say please make sure to enter a correct username so they will need to enter the correct username fred and the password in this case it's one two three and log in once they log in, it'll say Fred Fredders has been logged in and it will disappear. And then all of the hidden sheets will be hidden or all of the visible sheets and all the locking will happen inside the macro. And then your workbook will be ready to go. So let's take a quick look at this and how that might work. Let's say we don't want Fred to see vendors. So we want to make sure that the vendors are going to be hidden from him. So what we would do is we go into the worksheet security here and we take a look at Fred here. And we see that there's nothing for vendors here. So we're going to add it to that. So we'll add here. And then what we do is we select on the vendors worksheet. And we want to make sure that it's locked and hidden. And we're going to update that. Very good. So now when Fred gets his workbook, assuming that he has it, and we're going to log in as Fred. So we're going to log in. We're going to log out first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to log back in as Fred. And so we'll just type in his name, Fred Fredders. Fred's got to make his appearance as always one two three now you know my password and we're going to log in and once we're logged in and everything's going to go okay we're going to see that the vendors is no longer visible you see it used to be right here vendors is not available anymore to fred he cannot see it he cannot view it and that can be very helpful however let's say we're going to make a change we want to give fred the visible property but we don't want him to be able to make any changes so we can make it locked and visible and we can save and update that now the next time fred logs in so let's go ahead and log out of fred and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to log back in and fred fredders and then we'll log him in once we do you're going to see that that vendor screen is now going to appear so here if we take a look at it we now see the vendors however if fred tries to make any change at all we're going to get this the cell or chart that you're using is protected now assuming that you protect or unprotect individual cells i've got a training on that so whichever cells are unprotected fred will be able to change whichever cells are protected fred will not be able to change so that is the viewable but protected and then once again the other option is to view and unprotected which means that user could do anything they want to that screen so you've got three different options here of that so we see how simple it is simply just select the user and we can also update an email and i've got a lot of ideas for our patreon update on this so i'll be adding more functionality even to that such as email functionality and a lot more so it's relatively simple in its purpose we just need to select it even if we 
don't have any information here we can simply select from the workbook and when we select from the workbook this list is going to update so this list of users and their user rights is based on the selected workbook so we see how in the test we just have a few users so there's no users with any so we can do that to frank i think i cleared that out so sheet one locked and visible save and update but as soon as we make that save we see that Frank has the lock. So that is going to be remembered on a per workbook basis. So if we go back into an older workbook, and then we have that, but we go back into the test workbook, we see that those changes have automatically been remembered and it's gonna be expanded so that we understand what visibility Frank has on sheet one. So it's relatively simple to use. I would like to dive down a little bit deeper and see how I made this add-in. And if you wanna customize it, you can customize it as well. And that's really important. So I do want you to stick around because I'm gonna show you how to change passwords. I'm gonna show you how to update security. I'm gonna show you how to customize this for yourself. Even if you are new to VBA, I will make it easy to follow. You will not need to reprogram this on your own unless you want to, but I will show you how you can customize it and make it your own and you can fix any issues that might come up along the way and also how you can disperse this in real world applications and have other people use it. Also keep in mind that we do have the ability for other users to share and sync their macro enabled workbooks at the same time. Now I have an add-in on that. I did training a few months ago with an add-in that allows users to share and sync all their macro enabled workbooks and all the data in a workbook. So if we combine this add-in with that one add-in, we have a very powerful tool. One to allow the security, the other to share, and everything would work really great together. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be getting into this add-in and taking a quick look and seeing exactly how I made it and what are the most important applications and how we are able to bring this to life in order to use it. So first thing is we have this custom toolbar. Now I've got trainings specifically on a custom toolbar. So if you wanna learn how to create a custom toolbar, I've got that for you. But basically we're using the Office Ribbon X editor. This is a software. And in this software, I've created a custom tab. That custom tab is called User Security and Rights. You see there's a custom Custom tab here inside this custom tab I have a group called security and rights so you see these three buttons are inside a group that group is called security and rights so that's the group right here inside that group I have three different buttons as you can see I've login user management and worksheet security and I've got some other unnecessary things workbooks open so inside that I've also uploaded three different icons sheet security user login and user security now this is called office ribbon X editor remember I have a training just on that this is a free software it was done by uh, Fernando what was this guy's name Fernando Andrew and it can be found on github so it's free download and so the idea is that we have these three individual buttons each button has a unique id each button has a label an image now i created these three images and i was able to insert if i want to insert more icons i can just insert that and i just go to the folder that we're working on here and i would just insert some icons so that's exactly what i've done i'm using three different icons the sheet security the user login and the user security those names are called image so user login it matches that the image user security and the sheet security so we have three different names that are tied to the icons here and then of course we have the size which is large for each of them and then we have a macro that's going to run we want something to happen every time user clicks so when a user clicks login log out i'm going to look for a macro called user login log out when we add or edit users there's a macro called add edit users and there's another macro called worksheet security i'll be sharing those three macros with you so that is essentially it three buttons three unique icons three macros that run it and it's in its own unique group and its own new tab so that's all that that is and i've also got uh, two beginners training that covers this and a more advanced one on my channel so just look for toolbar or custom toolbar and i've got that all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to jump inside the developer we can take a quick look at this now this is the ultimate erp application that we just happen to be viewing that of course is in another training where i created this incredible ultimate erp application so if you're interested in that and how i created this that is also on my youtube all right so once inside the developer we're going to drop in here and we've got a few different workbooks 
open. You can also use Alt F11 to get in there. And I've got my Excel AI tool pack. That is a very, very cool. I'm considering adding another feature on here too. So make sure you grab that. It's just a few dollars a month and a great, great tool for you. So here's what we're going to do. Inside that, you see I've got several open. So let's close them so we can have a look at what I've got open. And we have a few different projects, users and security. This is the add-in that we're going to be going over. This is the ultimate ERP application. This is the tree view, the test and then my tool pack. So we're really gonna be focused mostly on this one right here, user security added. I've got three different sheets as part of this added and added is just like a regular workbook. However, the sheets are hidden. We don't necessarily see the sheets until we make a few changes. Inside this workbook, I have three different sheets, users, workbooks, and workbook security. I've also got three different user forms, which you saw briefly the user login, log out, and these buttons, these are two buttons on top of each other. That's why they look like this, but that's the way I want it. Only one button is shown at the same time. I've got a button for login and a button for log out, but I only gonna show one at a time. So it's okay that they're on top of each other. We've got the security form, which is going to be our main security form, which is where the user will select the workbooks, where we will have the tree view of user security and rights, and we've got some hidden fields here, which I'll be going over a little bit. We've got a selected user and the worksheet and the security level. User can save or update, cancel, and they can add a new user. And the last is the user form, where we have a list of users. When we select user, the username and the password and the email. We have the save and update. We can add a new user, we can delete a user, and we can cancel out of the user form. Inside this, we have three different modules. We have one module that's gonna focus on user login, logout. So that's its entire focus is user login. We have another one that's gonna be focused on updating existing users or adding new users. And then the last module, we're gonna focus on the worksheet security macros. How do we assign security levels to different worksheets on different workbooks? So it's all gonna be handled inside this module. So what I'm going to do now is, as I mentioned here, you can't really see the sheets, they're not here. So where are they? Well, they're inside that hidden workbook. So we're gonna unhide that workbook. When we go into this add-in here, we're gonna go into this workbook. Now keep in mind, while it's an add-in form, I can save it, no problem. I can make any changes that I want, and I can then save those changes. But when we change it back to a regular workbook, at least temporarily, we won't be able to save it as an add-in. When I create these add-in, I work as normal workbooks. Only at the very end do I then convert it to an add-in. So I work as an XLSM file, just a regular macro-enabled file. Except as soon as I'm ready to launch it, I convert it to an XLAM file. So what we're going to be doing is we're gonna click on this workbook here. And then what we wanna do is we wanna go into the properties of that, actually just this workbook. To get to the properties, we're going to go here, or F4 is a great shortcut. We're going to look in the properties. They might be in different locations on your screen. And we're going to go to something called is added. So that's where we're going to focus. And I'm going to change that to false. Now, as soon as I do that, three different worksheets are going to appear. Now, keep that in mind. We can't save it in its current form. Notice it's an XLAM file. So I just told it this is not an add-in. So if we take a look inside here, one more time, we go into the workbook is added, now it's showing false. Oops, I double clicked it. Now it's showing false, right? So let's go back in there because I double clicked it. So what I wanna show you is this workbook here. We see the is added, I wanna make sure it stays false. So when it's false and we try to save the application, it's gonna give us saying, hey, this extension cannot be used with the selected file type. Basically, we're telling it in two different instances, this file type is an XLAM file. However, this is showing, so that's conflicting. This is saying it's not an add-in file. The extension XLAM is saying it is. So because of that conflict, it's giving us a warning, but that's no problem. For viewing purposes, I'm simply going to keep this as not an add-in. If I wanna save the changes, I will change is add-in back to true before saving those changes. Very good, so we saw inside that, but now let's take a look because I have changed this to as add-in equals false, I can now view the three different sheets that are part of this add-in. So the first is the workbooks. Every workbook that we decided we want to 
add some user security has to get saved. Whoops, let's get out of that screen. We want to make sure that we assign a unique workbook ID. I want to know the name of it and I want to know the path of it. The path might not be too important, but it's there. So those are the three information that I want to know. And it's most important is that workbook ID. That way we can refer to that. Meaning if I decide this workbook, I want to have some security to it. So automatically we get that. So let me show you what that would look like here. So we add that new workbook. Next up, we want to have a list of users. Obviously, I know that I need to have a list of users. So we've got a list of users. Now keep in mind that we could easily mask these passwords, but when you protect your VBA code, for example, if you were to go inside this add in right here, right click here, and you want to go to the project properties. When you assign protection and you add a password to it, nobody will be able to look inside. Nobody will be able to convert it unless they hack it but most people would not do that. And so it's better to be able to have that security there so that nobody can actually look in and see those passwords. So that's a much more secure environment. So we have the passwords, which we can do more to hide, but they're here, the email and the row. So this is essentially our user list. I've got icons that are gonna need to be used inside our user form. So those icons are here. And I've got the three different, this should not say username, this is our security types. So we'll just put security types and I'll save this right after I convert it back. So we have three different security types. Notice these security levels here are in a named range called security levels. When I have a drop down list of security levels, we need to know which of those security levels. So I've got them inside a drop down list right here. But keep that in mind, we're gonna need that. Next up and lastly is the worksheet security. So each individual worksheet has some security level. So. I've got a workbook ID. I need to know what workbooks it's been assigned to, the name of that workbook, which can be helpful. I also need to know the sheet name and the sheet code name could be helpful in case it's different. The reason we're keeping the sheet code name is because theoretically users could change the sheet name. So we do want to have a code name. I also need to know the user ID and the username, and I need to know the security level. So that means I know inside the tree view updated for the sheet name vendors, the admin has a locked and visible. So Fred, for example, has locked and visible the sheet vendors. Remember, we locked it and made it visible. So we're keeping track of that here inside that. And then we have a database row that's assigned to it. Once we have all that information, it's very helpful. If I want to display only the controls for a specific workbook, what I would do is I'd run it through an advanced filter, meaning I only want to see workbook one. So I would just put in a criteria here, let's say workbook three, then we run an advanced the results of that. So we know that inside workbook three, we only have one row. So for example, if I choose that test here, here we see that we have just that one item, sheet one. So we see here, sheet one, sheet one, sheet one, user ID three, that's Fred's ID. We see the username is Fred, the locked and the visible, and we see that it's row 29. Now, if I decide to change this to unlocked and I save and update that, we see now that it's unlocked. So we see how the database changes and the results. Now, if I load a different workbook with more data and we also see the results here. So this here is workbook ID one. This is workbook ID two, I believe. So we can see that all these different security rights are based on the results here. So that's how we can filter based on a workbook ID so that we only know those sheets and security levels on a per workbook basis. So it's relatively simple. As far as the data is concerned, we just want to store the workbooks that have the user security. We want a list of users and we want to understand exactly what security is being applied to what worksheets by which users. But now how do we get that data into the workbooks and how do we get it inside the added? Well, that's all gonna happen with those user forms. So it's the user forms that regardless of what workbook is open is gonna handle all the loading of the information and all of the added information. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is when we launch a user form, nothing's really going to happen until we determine what workbook. Now, what I've done is I've decided to display the default workbook unless it's the add-in. 
For example, if I have him in this tree view, or let's say we have this uh, ultimate ERP, and I decide I want to launch it, let's go ahead and make this back and add in again so that we can get this to work just temporarily. So notice that we do not have the option here anymore. However, it is only available on our user security, and that is because we have turned off the add in feature. So if I were to load it in, it would automatically default to the workbook. So in other words, if I've got the ultimate ERP, it would automatically load it in. We're going to keep it like that for now. Now, what we're going to be doing is we want to be able to update and change. So when I select, let's say I select admin, admin's a user or David Daniel, we want that user to default to the selected user. But when we select a specific worksheet, such as orders, we want the worksheet and we want the security level. Now keep this in mind, because I have these worksheets open, because I have the add-in open, let's take a look at this inside the workbook here. Is add-in equals false? If I try to save this either manually or with the code, again, we're going to get a bug. So if I try to save this, we certainly could have a bug that's going to come up. If we want to be able to add that into an additional workbook. So I'll go over step by step with you. What we want to do is when we make a change to whatever workbook, we want all of that information to load inside this, what's what we call a tree view. And I want that tree view expanded. Now I've got a training specifically on a tree view. In fact, it was this training right here in which we actually created the tree view. So it was, I believe in the order items or orders, and it was very, very cool. So we were able to create. So if you're looking for more of a detailed list on that tree view, I believe it was here. So we created this tree view, which was quite cool. So here's an individual individual training where we have purchases and we're able to display that. So it's a tree view component. And then once again, look for tree view inside my YouTube channel or on my website, and you can find the detailed instructions about how we do that. But tree views are really great because we can show icons. We can show a breakdown of information. For example, in this type of tree view, we have our customers. We have our individual work orders, purchase orders, and invoices. If I select on purchase orders, I can select on individual purchases and have those display. So all we have inside our add-on is a simpler version of the tree view where we have the user, we've already got the workbook here, and then we have the individual worksheets and the security assigned to those users. If we add more worksheets, they're gonna get added to that. So for example, if I decide I want to click here and I wanna add another worksheet, I've already got vendors, customers, and chart data, but maybe I want orders, and I want locked and visible, and I can do just that. So we can simply, very easily, add a certain type of security level to any sheet, or of course we can change it as well and it'll be safe. So how do we get this tree view to display the details? And once again, it's going to come through this advanced filter. I need to know the workbook ID, I need to have all the results, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through these results, and we are going to get those results come into our tree view component. If we take a look inside our VBA, let's shrink this, we got a lot open here, and we wanna shrink this one. If we wanna look inside, we're gonna focus on this security. We're looking at this tree view component. There's a name for this, and it's called tree view. So we wanna populate that tree view with all the data from here. So keep in mind that we do have some pictures. Now, if we want to get pictures inside that, it's a few different steps. The first step is to put those pictures somewhere. In other words, I don't want those pictures on a file path on my computer, because if I give you this file, I want you to have those pictures too. So to do that, I wanna make sure that those pictures are somewhere inside the workbook. So I've done here. Now I've inserted these pictures here. Now, how did I do that? Well, if I go into the developer, and I go into insert here, and I choose an ActiveX, such as an image ActiveX, that's the one I'm looking for. That's the easiest one to work with. So I've selected here, and now what I would do is I would go into the properties here. Once we've selected that, now make sure the design mode is on. If the design mode is off, I can't do anything with this. Once the design mode is on, I can select it, and then I can go to properties. Once inside the properties, and I'll bring that over here, I can then browse for an image. I'm gonna select on 
the picture here and I'm going to look at this little browse icon. Then what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to browse for that. Now I've got some different formats here. I've decided to use the ICO. So I, I tried PNG, JPG, but I like the ICO type. I'm going to give you all these in now. Of course, if you're a Patreon member, you'll get all these icons as well. But I use the .ICO. I like that one much better. It was more clear. So I use that. And so once we do that, let's go back out of here. So we see that we have it, but it's not really set right. What we can do is we can change the size mode. We can use either stretched or we can use zoom. So either one's going to work. So we can stretch or zoom it. Now, if we stretch it how like this, we might get some gaps in there. But if we stretch it, the aspect ratio may not look good. So what I do suggest is I suggest you use the zoom feature. And then what you want to do is you want to shrink it just about so that everything is just right, just the way you like it, like right about that. So that's pretty good the way that we have it. And the size doesn't matter. So <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. So what we're going to be doing is we want to make sure that we give it a name that we can remember. So if we take a look here, we see locked and hidden. We see this one's called locked visible and we see this one's called unlocked. So I've given them names to give it a name. All you would do is just name here. We just type it in right there and now it's been assigned. So when we select it, we see that name again. These names are important because we'll need to recognize them in VBA. Once again, this is called locked hidden. This is called locked visible and this is called unlocked. We will be setting the size inside VBA and we can change that a little bit, but we'll keep them standard and about like that. Once we have them, what we want to do is we want to load them inside our user forms, but it's kind of like a multi-step. I can't actually just load them directly in here. I need a middleman, like a holder, like let's say a carrying book, or maybe you might want to think of it as a picture book. And that's a component right here. If we take a look at this component here and we go into the properties, we see that that's called an image list. Now an image list is something that may or may not be available. If I select on my toolbox here, here's our toolbox. What we're looking for is something called an image list. So if we take a look, we've got list view. It's this one right here. If you don't have that available, you can right click here, go to additional controls. And what you want to do is you want to look for something called Microsoft image list. Microsoft image list control and then select that. Once you've selected it, it will become available here inside this. And the image list is simply a holder. It's not visible. So when you bring it in here, again, we can size it any way we want to. It's not going to be visible when we run the form. You're not going to see it. See, it's not here, but it is a container that holds those pictures. So the reason we want to load them inside there and hold that container, let's bring that back up here, is I want to, whoops, here, security form. I want to be able to put pictures in here. Once they're inside here, I can then load them in here. So to do that, I've given this one here. This one's called image list. So here's called image list. This one I can delete. So to do that, when we load the user form up, I'm going to take those three pictures and I'm going to load them directly into this, like such as a folder, or this carrier that's going to hold those pictures. Once they're available in here, they can become available in here. So as I mentioned, that's going to happen when we load the user form. So when we load a user form, that's called an initialize event. So what I want to do is I want to look at the code behind this user form. So we can right click and go to view code. We're going to look for a very specific event. And to do that, we're going to click in here and we're looking for the user form. So the first thing we're going to do is select on the user form. And then it's already here, but we want to look for initialize. So the first thing is when I initialize, I want to make sure that I get those images inside that image list. So we're going to dimension the my image list as a new image list. So that's very important to get those images and the workbook as a workbook. I might as well go in order. I want to add each of the open workbooks to that list. If you remember correctly, when we load this, look, it's got three different workbooks that are already loaded inside this combo box. That combo box has a very specific name. So if we go into the security, we see that the name is called the selected workbook. So what I want to do is I want to determine all the open workbooks and I want to build this list based on all the open workbooks. The only thing I want to exclude is the add-in. So I want to make sure that the add-in or perhaps any add-in is not in this list. And so to do that, we're going to loop through all of the open workbooks and that's going to happen on that initialized event. So we're going to go back and view that code. And here's that initialize event. 
So we're going to say add open workbooks to the list except the added. So remember, we have a workbook as a workbook. Dimension does a workbook. So for every workbook in all of the workbooks that are open, we're going to look if the name contains user security. If it doesn't contain, meaning equals zero, meaning we're going to look inside the workbook name. And I'm going to look for user security. If it's not found, then this will be zero. That's the in string command. So we're using the in string command. We're looking inside the name of that workbook. And we're going to look for user security. As long as that's zero, meaning not found, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to take that workbook name and we're going to add it to the item of the selected workbook. Now, the selected workbook is that workbook item. So we're going to add that into that. So once again, I want to show you this one. It's called the selected workbook. We see it right here. So we're simply adding those individual workbooks to that list so that they're available to us, that we can select on them and load the workbook. So this simply loads the workbooks into that combo box. Now we're going to focus on this is all for initializing the images into that. So we need to work with them. First thing is we want to set a width and a height. So we're setting individual sizes for our image. So my image list, that's the one right here. We're setting some default sizes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take those pictures on this sheet, this worksheet right here, these three pictures. We're looking at the user sheet. That's where they're located. We're going to look at them by name. We see inside the developer. Once we click the design mode, we can see those names locked and hidden, uh, locked and visible and unlocked. So we can see those names and they're coming from the user sheet. We need to put those into our image list. So focusing on the image list, all the image lists, we're going to dimension the image number as long. We need to increment that to make sure the image number equals one. We're going to add this image to our image list. The key is unlocked. I want to give it a unique name and the picture is going to be on from the user sheets unlocked picture. So if I click on users dot, we see unlocked unlocked is the name of the picture. Remember we added this one too. So remember we created this one. Let's see what was the name we used. We called name here. So that means that's going to be available to us. So when I click users dot name here, you see it's available. Once we add it, it becomes available and then dot pictures. That means that's the picture that's focused on that. So I'm going to take that picture and I'm going to put it directly inside our image list so that it is available. So we're doing that with three different images, unlocked, locked, visible. We want to make sure that the names are exactly like we have added and we're good to go. So we've added all those. Next up, we want to initialize. So basically we're taking the images and we're putting them inside this little holder here. We're putting them into this one right here. This image list, think of them, they're inside here. They're holding it. That's where our images are contained. But next, what I want to associate this tree node with these images. So that means when I need to display them here, they're already available. So what we want to do is we want to kind of link these two together. And we want to say, hey, anytime that we need this type of picture, look at unlocked or anytime we need this type of picture so it knows. What we don't want to do is every time a picture is needed, we don't want it to go and look for it. We want it to be available. So we kind of have to link these two things together so that the pictures are quickly recognized. And to do that, it is relatively simple. We're going to focus on that tree view and we're going to set the image list equal to my image list once again here. So the image list inside the tree view is going to be connected to them. So here how we're connecting the two together right here. Tree view has its own image list. This one has its own image list. So now we're linking the two. I'm just going to put it there. Link to image lists together. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're giving it an indentation. So this is how far it's going to be to the right that we want. We're giving it a label. We're just going to call it Tiva manual. So it's going to be manually editing the labels and hide selection is false because we want to do that. We don't want it hidden. We want it visible. So that's all we need to do. So this is how we set the image widths. We bring them into our holder and then we connect the two together. The next up is simply the user list. So we want to connect the user list. I've got a user list that needs to be linked up. What do I mean by user list that's linked up? If we take a look in our formulas and we have a name manager and I've got something called user list. So if we tab over, we see that it's all the alphabetized user names. Every time we add or we update the user, this list gets rebuilt and re-alphabetized. Notice it's different because this could be in any order here on the left side. But this is our sorted and organized list because I want a kind of an alphabetized list of users. It makes it easier to locate. So to do that, 
we created a macro and then I've got a named range an offset that means as we add users this is going to grow so we see the dancing ants around this so that means what I want to do is I want to connect this it's called user list I want to make sure that that user list is connected to this drop down right here this is called selected user so that when we run it automatically I want to make sure let's select on the form so that when we run it I want to make sure that our alphabetized list of users is populated in there now to do that we want to make sure that when we're working with an add-in it's very important to make sure that the named range of that list called user list not only do we not want to add the user list I want to also associate the add-in name with it so the full name of that is workbook name in the user list so together that ensures the row source now what do I mean by the row source well if we take a look inside that object and we want to connect the list to this that is called the row source so here we look down here and we see the row source now it's empty here and that is okay it can be empty and the reason we want it empty is because we want it real time we want to update that so there's no data however if I were to just put this to user list here then it would update as well now why didn't I do that if we see here we got the user list here I want to make sure that it's always up to date and so by using VBA we can ensure the most current user list and it's just one line of code so me is the form name the selected user is the combo box the row source is the specific property and we're going to tie this named range to that now notice this is kind of hard to see what this is is a quotation marks and then it is an apostrophe and then the quotation marks so we really need that then it's the workbook name then you can't see it here I'm going to add some spaces here then it's the quotation marks then it is the apostrophe the exclamation mark and then the list name so all that needs to be put together just like that so we can assign that we're going to do the exact same thing with the security levels if you remember correctly I did create a named range called security levels right here we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did and add that named range once again because the user is going to have many workbooks open I want to make sure that when we associate a named range I want to be very specific with the book this workbook means the add-in this workbook is always the add-in it means the workbook of the code the active workbook could be whatever workbook the user is using or working in so if I want to focus on that specific workbook the one that the user is on I'll use active workbook if I want to notate the workbook where the code resides I'm going to use this workbook so keep that in mind the differentiation is very important on that great so the last thing is we want to make sure if the active workbook name does not equal this workbook name then what does that mean <laughs> this workbook is the add-in name the active workbooks whatever workbook is using it and that means if the user is not currently in the active workbook then what I want to do is I want to locate that selected workbook name I'll show you what this means better than so here what we're going to say is if I run this we see that there's no worksheet because I'm currently inside the add-in if I were to run that directly inside that it would let me show you what I mean by that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back in here I'm going to go to the properties and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the is add-in back to true just for a moment now we have that availability so now when I select it notice how this is automatically populated because the current workbook active workbook is not the add-in file so I can automatically populate this when we launch the user form so if it's inside let me show you that one more time I'm going to shift to this workbook right here I'm going to go back inside our add-in I'm going to go to this workbook here I'm going to go to is add-in we're going to go back to false here now because they're the same workbook we don't want to populate this unless it's a different workbook so that's basically the idea so great but however when I do select it we will populate that now notice that when I made a change to there this automatically populated so that's going to happen on a macro that means when there's some kind of a change to this combo box we want something to happen so let's go ahead and take a look at that action and so we're going to dive back into that user form here inside this one and we're going to focus on the change event or when something happens to this particular selected workbook we can double click it 
And what that's going to do is going to get us right here to the selected workbook and of course the change event. And that's exactly what we want to focus on. Now inside that we're going to have that change event. So here's everything that's going to happen as soon as the workbook changes. So when it does, we're going to dimension the workbook as a workbook and the worksheet variable as a worksheet. If for some reason this value, the selected workbook, if the value inside that combo box is empty, there's nothing we can do. So we want to make sure that it has a value. The first thing what we want to do is there's a hidden workbook ID. I do want to clear that as well. And that means for every single workbook, as we saw earlier inside our workbooks, we have an associated ID. So I want to make sure that we populate a field with that ID. So let's take a look back in here and we see that we have this hidden field. So that means on any change of here, I want to populate all of the tree view and this hidden value called workbook ID. It is hidden. If we take a look at the visible property here, we see that it's false. So we see that if we make it true, it's going to show up. And I don't really want the users to see this. But I just wanted to hold some data and I wanted to hold the ID of the workbook. So when we make any change to this, I want to clear this field right here called workbook ID. And so we do that directly inside the code. Let's pull that up here. And the code is right inside here, view code. So we want to clear the workbook ID. If the selected workbook value equals empty, we're going to exit the sub, meaning if there's no workbook at all, there's nothing we can do. I also want to clear the associated worksheet. We have the worksheet field. That's the selected worksheet. We want to clear that as well. And so that workbook that the user has chosen is going to be our workbook. We're going to set that workbook so we can work with this object variable. We're setting it to workbooks, the selected workbook. So this is our selected workbook. Once we have it inside a variable, we can then work with it. We want to make sure that it is something. If it is nothing, we can exit the sub, obviously. Now what I would like to do is I would like to get every sheet in that workbook. And remember, we want to populate that drop down list. We've already cleared the worksheets from the drop down list. Now we need to populate these worksheets with every single worksheet name inside that workbook. So we're going to run a for each loop. For every single worksheet inside that workbook, we are going to add an item to the selected worksheet. Just to review, let's pull this up. We don't need to see all that. Just to review here, this is the drop down list that I'm going to be populating right here. That's the drop down list called selected worksheet, the combo box that I want to populate with all of the worksheets in this selected workbook. So we're looking at the workbook, then we're going to build out the drop down list based on all of the worksheets. And we can do this through this little loop right here. So we're going to add worksheets to a combo box. So once we do that, we also want to grab the unique ID. So the unique ID is going to be where? It's going to be inside a custom document property. When we create these workbooks, I'm creating a custom document property. I want to have something unique about every single workbook. And in Excel, there's something called a custom document property. If we take a look back inside this workbook here and we go into here and we go to the information, we can go into the properties right here. And we're going to look in that and then advanced properties. Once we do that, it's going to open up this tab here. We want to go then to something called custom. Now we can create as many custom as we want. We can do something like test custom and then we can create a test value. So when we add it, we can do that. So we can create a unique ID or pretty much anything we want on a per workbook basis. And the beauty of it is, is it ties this workbook to this unique ID so that when the user has this, we know exactly what workbook we're focusing on. And that's going to be very important. So we can tie it to the individual workbooks. And then there's another way we can confirm it through a hidden sheet. So both are going to be very helpful. This tells us that this workbook has already been added to our list. So it ties the individual workbook itself along 
with the database that we have directly inside. So it ties this workbook ID inside our add-in with the actual workbook. Very good. So once we do that, we want to tie that, you're getting that, and we're going to put that inside the workbook ID. And we're going to run a macro called tree view refresh. Now, this is the macro that I want to go over with you. Some of the others are macros are very similar to what we've done. But what I want to share with you is how do we build out that tree view? So that's really cool and really interesting. So let's take a look inside the worksheet security macros and we're going to build out this tree view. So we're going to look here for tree view refresh. What this is basically going to do, it's going to take all of our security. So we're going to put that workbook ID. I want to know all the sheets that have been assigned to users and given security for the given. And then what I would like to do is I'd like to loop through all of these sheets and then would like to add them. But what we want to do is we want to add them to individual users, right? So what I would first like to do is inside our tree view, I'd like to have a list of users. Then for every individual user, if there's any worksheets that have been assigned to that user with certain security rights, I would like to have that ability. Here's what I mean by that. The first thing what I want to do is I want to create a list of users. So we see this, we've got a list of users. Now, if we were to shrink everything, all you would see is that list of users. Some of them here have no worksheets assigned to them. Some of them do. So I want to get a unique list of users and I want to populate this list. Once I have that, then I want to look to see if there's any sheets that have been assigned. If there are sheets, I then want to assign them to the users. So it's going to be in two steps. The first thing is to populate this tree view with a list of unique users. The next is to associate those individual users with worksheets. So what we're going to do is give each user a unique ID. So we have a list of unique users. We've got a user ID. So let's do that. Let's create that unique list of users. And then the second step will be to tie those any individual users using the ID and then adding the individual sheets to those users and then at the individual security levels. So let's go through that macro now. It's called tree view refresh. So inside this macro, what we want to do is we want to dimension some variables as we're going to need to run it through the users. So we need a user row, we need the last user row, and we need the last worksheet. We're going to be going through the worksheet. And so we need a bunch of variables. We also need the user ID as a string. I need to know the security level and the sheet name as string. So we're going to focus on the security form here. Tree view node. So what we want to do is inside the security form, inside our tree view, remember that's that form, the tree view is once again, just to relate here, view the object It is this one right here. We can see the properties and we can see that it is called tree view. So we're focused on that component right there. So inside that component, we are going to clear the tree view using nodes. Nodes are the individual items of a tree view. They're called nodes. Remember, I've got a unique training just on the tree view. First of all, I want to refresh users. I want to make sure that we have a brand new list of users. All that macro does is create this unique list of users and then alphabetize them. So that's all we're doing with this. And once again, we want an alphabetized list. So I'm going to be working with this list here. Next up inside the users, I want to determine the last user row. We're going to use column G because I want to know the last row. In this case, it's 13. So if for some reason it's less than four, we're going to exit the sub. Actually, I should use less than three. Let me change that to less than three. We're going to exit the sub if it, does, it doesn't have any users. Next up, we're going to create a loop. The user row is going to be three to the last user row. I want to add each individual user and I want to give them a unique name. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create something called a node to that. So tree view nodes. We want to create a top level node and we need to add a key. Now, a key for everything is a unique identifier. No two nodes or no two items within your tree view can have the same key. So first of all, what is unique? We know the user ID is unique. So if I combine the user ID with text, I know it's going to be a unique ID so I can do that. So our key for the first one is going to be the user plus the user ID. Now the user ID is coming directly from column G, as we can see right here. Once we have that, we need to give it some text. So we have this unique ID, but that's kind of hidden. Nobody sees that. But the text part we do see, and that's basically the name, and that's going to come from column H. So that's all we have to do there. This four lines of code or five rows will build that first level, that top level tree view. So we're good with that. 
relatively easy. So if we were to stop it here, just so we can see what that might look like, although I think you can imagine, we do the worksheet security and we select a workbook here. And all it's gonna do is gonna stop right there, which is what I want. And all we're gonna do is build that top level. So that's all we have done up until this point. Once we have that and we can continue that code here, and then it's the next part of the code that adds in the remaining sheets. So let's take a quick look at that and see what that is. First of all, I want to create basically an advanced filter based on the workbook ID. And I'm gonna put that workbook ID here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run an advanced filter based on all the original data of the worksheet. So that's gonna come all here. And only the workbook criteria is here, not the user ID, just the workbook criteria, just this criteria, L2 through L3. So I need to place that workbook ID right here. Where's it coming from? That workbook ID is gonna come directly from that hidden field called workbook ID. That's that hidden field we saw. I'm gonna put that in L3, that is our criteria. So that workbook, I'm gonna put in the word criteria here. So once we have the criteria, we're then ready to run our advanced filter. I want to determine the last row of the original data. If it's less than four, that means we have no worksheets. We can exit the sub. We're going to run the advanced filter all the way to column H. The criteria, as mentioned, is going to be our workbook ID. Those results are going to come directly from Q2 through V. We're having the results come here. Once I have the results, I'm going to determine the last row, and then I want to loop through all the rows. So we've gone over advanced filters before. Obviously, I've got a training just on advanced filters, somebody basic. We're running through the advanced filters. We're gonna run a loop through all of the results. So we're running a loop starting at three because our first row is three, going all the way to the last row. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the sheet name from column Q. I'm gonna grab the user ID from column S. I'm gonna grab the security level here, gonna be at column U. And I also want to know the worksheet row in column V. So that's important. I want to know the original database row. Next up, what we're going to do is now we're going to build out. But if I'm going to add a sub item, if I've added the individual items here, let's say this user is user number five, and I need to add some worksheets under user number five. I need to find user five. If I find it, I can add a sub node or a second level node to that, but I need to know the original key. So to do that, we're gonna focus on our security form inside that tree view, inside nodes. We're adding in nodes, but there's a relative, like a parent, right? What is the parent or the relative? The relative is that user and user ID. So this time I've got the user ID coming directly from here. So what this is gonna do is gonna locate that top level user. Now we know what user to locate. And what is the relationship between it? Well, this is a child, right? It's just under, the parent is the user, and the child is the worksheet level. So that's the relationship between them. But now what is it that we're adding? So we need to add two things, or actually three things. We need to add a key, which is unique. We need to add the text, and we need to add a picture that's associated. So these three things, that key must be unique, so what's unique about this? Well, that worksheet row is very unique. So if I put in that, I know that there's never gonna be a row that's going to be the same. So I can use that as the unique key. So that's exactly what I've done. So I'm gonna use the worksheet, just some text here and this. So this is gonna give it that unique ID. The text is gonna be the sheet name because I wanna know the sheet name. And next up, what is the image? And that is our security level. So the security level is gonna be automatically that image. That's why if we notice the security level is automatically the same as our images. So if we take a look here, we see that unlock locked and visible. The only difference on that security level is I replacing the and in the space with nothing. Why is that important? So notice this one has an and and a space, right? I just want to remove the and and the space here. Same thing here. I want to remove the and and the space. Why is that important? Because if I take a look at our, let's go back into the developers and go back into design mode so I can place it. If we see this one's called locked and hidden, it's not called locked and hidden, it's called locked hidden. So basically the name of the image is the same as this. We're just removing the and. So locked hidden, locked visible, unlock none of them have spaces none of them have and signs so we're simply taking the security type and we're removing a certain amount of text and that's going to leave us with exactly the name of the image so it knows exactly which image to add so the security level here is we're taking away using the replace statement we're taking away the space in the and and we're replacing it with nothing that's going to match the same name as the picture if it's the same name of the picture 
all we need to do is add the image very good so that we're simply going to loop through all of those next up we need to loop through all the nodes in there and i just want to make sure they're expanded now if you don't want yours expanded you could comment this out if i comment this out let's take a look at that and see what that looks like so now we're going to go into this worksheet security and I'm going to select a workbook here and we see that they're not expanded. So I mean, it's kind of whatever you like. If you don't want to expand them, you can manually expand them, of course. But I just kind of wanted them expanded. It's nice to see for visual, but it's not necessary. So all we were going to do is loop through every single node and we're just going to expand it. So that's pretty much it. All right. I don't want to make this one too long because we do have a lot to cover, but I want to make sure that you always get the fresh content and I know this could we could go on for a long time but I really want to do is I wanted to focus on the nodes and lastly before we go into that I want to give you a brief overview of the users here and we also have the login logout users is relatively simple all we're doing is we're refreshing the list we're adding new users we're saving or updating existing users to the database so it's relatively easy just saving and updating to the database here nothing too special about that we're loading the user forms when we select them from a list so if i have user manager and i select it we're simply loading the three fields into that i need to line those up better so we're simply loading that and then we're able to add a new user delete user so it's relatively straightforward inside our user form and of course if we want to have a user form and I want to hold the control button I'm also do this with you and then align those lefts and I'm just going to make sure that we've aligned the rights on the labels here to make sure that everything lines up so that's all we're doing when we select here we're loading the details I've got lots of good training on that and deleting the user now inside the login and out the only ones that we didn't go over we're going to show the login form when it gets called out from the menu when we log out log out form show before we show the form I want to determine whether we are logging in or logging out now in each workbook that we do create we're going to create a hidden sheet if we look all the way down here it should be hidden but not generally it's going to be hidden but what I want to do for every single workbook in which we create this we're going to create through VBA a worksheet the worksheet's going to keep track of the workbook ID the logged in status the username and the date and time that they're logged in if I see that they're logged in and I see that they have a logged in time then when I go to that I know that we need to log them out so this is this sheet normally it's hidden is going to keep track of that so we want to keep that automatically to show so that's going to help us so all we need to do is go into this called the secret sheet or security sheet whichever you want and this will keep track of some information it's always going to be hidden except during this training making sure that we do have a secret sheet on here we want to make sure that we're going to focus on that if it's logged out then we're going to show some information for the login form we want to show the login button and let me go ahead and show you how this would work in real time so what I'm going to do is we're going to go into this workbook and I'm just going to set this back to the is added so I can show you this real time now that we're back in here we can go into any data and now what we can do is we can go in and we're able to show you this all right so into this we're going to go into security and we're going to go into the log and log out now because we're already logged in as we saw it's going to have the username and we're going to log out so fred has been now logged out if we go back into that sheet again the secret sheet here we see that we're logged out fredders and the time is gone so it keeps track of it in this secret sheet and that's a great way to do that now if we were to click the same button and the same exact form now we're going to show the login so it's the same form but we have some fields that are hidden or not and when we log in again of course it's going to return to that so basically all we're doing is now been logged in so we're hiding and showing the data based on that so this is simply going to hide or show we're going to change the header to logged in or logged out that header here is going to change log out or log in is going to change based on that and we can do this through this field so whether they're currently logged out and we need to log them in or they're currently logged in and we need to log them out now when the user logs in it's very important to make sure that we have that secret sheet and also we are going to go with the log out form we're going to focus on that we want to make sure they have a correct password and a correct username that's important i want to get the user row now this is critical if we go in to here let's pull that up here and oh sorry it's hidden because we changed it if we remember inside the user sheet that's now hidden 
column B is the username, column A is the user ID, column B is the username, and column C is the password. So what I want to do is I want to look up inside column B. I want to look for that user name. And if it's found, I want to return the row into that user, and it's going to be here. Now, if the user row is zero, that means that name wasn't found. We're going to let the user know username was not found. Please re-enter your username. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to check for the password. Now, the password, remember, is in column C. Now that we do have a correct row, if we're proceeding, that means we do have a correct username. We found the user row, but I want to check for the right password. So I want to trim any spaces that might be before or after the password, just in case. Now what we want to do, if the password does not equal trim, what we're going to do is we're going to check inside column C in the user row. I want to look inside here, the user sheets. Does the password value if it does not equal what we have saved, we're going to let the user know the password entered was incorrect. Please enter a correct password, meaning all the trim does is remove preceding spaces after that. So that's all we need to do there, just in case they've added extra space and they don't see that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to also make sure that in the database there's no spaces before or after. And so we're just going to check to make sure that we have a correct password. If not, we're going to exit the sub. Moving on, now that we know we've got a correct password and we've got a correct username, we can now log the user into the workbook. However, what I need to do is I need to go through that sheet. And let me go ahead and go back inside this one more time. And we're going to go into this workbook and is add and equals false. The reason is because I want to take you through this. Now, once again, this time I'm going to put it in a workbook ID and I'm going to put in a user ID because those results are only going to be for the given user for the given workbook for one workbook and one user. I want to go through all the sheets and if it's locked and visible, I want to make sure that the sheet is locked if it's unlocked or if it's locked and hidden. So I need to go through each one of these security levels and then make sure there's a certain amount of security that have been applied or no security to that individual sheet. And so to do that, we need to set that workbook ID criteria. We need to set that user ID criteria. So that's very important. The workbook ID we're going to get from the security sheet B1. We could also get it from our unique ID inside the info in the workbook. We're going to get it from sheet B1. We are going to also get the user ID directly from column A. Remember I had mentioned here it was hidden at the time. Column A is the user ID, column B is the username, column C is the password. So we're going to pull that up. So what I want to do is I want to extract the user ID and I want to take that user ID and we're going to put it in. But now what we're going to do is we are going to put our focus directly on this sheet. This is where we need to add the criteria. This is where we need to have those results come for that individual user in our advanced filter. So L3 is going to take on that workbook ID. M3 is going to take on that user ID. That's the criteria. Then once again, we're going to run an advanced filter like we do many times. That criteria is going to be L2 through M3. The results are going to come here. We're going to make sure that we have results. If we don't, we're going to exit the sub. We're going to loop through all the results. I'm going to put the sheet name, which is coming from column Q, our sheet name. We're going to put that into a variable called sheet name. I want to take the security level. I want to put that into a variable called security level. And now what I would like to do is use the select case because there's three possible security levels. If the security level equals unlocked, then what I would like to do is I would like to make sure that the sheet is visible and I want to make sure to unprotect it using a password. Now I have plans for Patreon to make this dynamic and probably what we'll do is we'll save individual passwords inside here so i'll make an extra column with passwords and we'll make it more dynamic so that each individual workbook could have its own password but i just put this in temporarily so if you just want to use this you just need to update the password or you can store it somewhere in your workbook so we can unprotect this sheet with the word password what if it's locked and visible if it's locked i want to make sure that it is visible and i want to add the protection with this password so we're adding simple protection and giving it a password however if it's locked and hidden i want to make sure that the sheet is very hidden so we're going to make it hidden and then we're going to protect it with a password so remember these two are protected protect protect this one's unprotected so we're going to go through each individual one and that's all we do to update it. Then what we want to do is we need to update the logged in sheet. We need to show that the user is logged in into B2. We need to make sure that our B3 contains the username, whatever the username in B3. I'm populating this sheet right here. I'm putting in that they're logged in. I'm putting the username and I'm going to put in before the time that they're logged in. So before is going to take on now, 
which is the current date and time. We're going to give a user message saying the user has been logged off, and we're going to close out the user form. And that's essentially it. We went over almost everything inside this add-in. So inside this one, let's pull that up again. Again, if you don't see it here because it's is add and is false. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure to update it, going back in here and resetting that is add in property so that we can now see it for other workbooks, changing this to true. Now the sheets are hidden. And now, of course, we just exit out of here and go back into this workbook and we can see it for all the workbooks. So once again, we were able to show how we can log in and out of any individual workbook using our user list and passwords, how we can assign individual user management here. I'm also thinking another put in for Patreon, a user type, because essentially this worksheet security and this user management should only be visible to those user types that are admin. And so for a user type that is non-admin, they should not see these. And I'm going to be making that for the Patreon update. So for non-admin, we'll be hiding that and I'll be adding a user type to this. Of course, you can do that yourself. And of course, we have the worksheet security where we were able to create this really cool tree view. And we were also able to have individual user rights for individual sheets and make quick changes for them. Very, very cool. Thank you so much for your continued support. Please don't forget, I've got amazing courses, including my ultimate dashboard course. If you want to create a single click dashboard, I've got that available. That's been around a few years, but it is still kicking strong and is an amazing course. If you want to build comprehensive dynamic dashboards with unlimited reports that can be viewed in just a single click, that is the advanced dashboard course. So go ahead and check that out down below and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much.